Hi, this is Corey Bauer, Application Engineer with Go Engineer, and in this session today, we are going to look at topology optimization from our Shape Your World event. We are going to look at a product called Inspire by Solid Thinking, and it does analysis-driven design. The way it does this is it allows us to optimize on various different characteristics. We can optimize for maximum stiffness in our model. We can target a certain mass so that we minimize. Uh, we can uh, target certain resonant frequencies. And we also define the wall thickness that we want to allow. It also allows for three different controls on the optimized design. Uh, one is purely organic, which would be geared toward 3D printing. One can be set for extrusion, which would be prismatic machining, uh, water jet, or laser. And we can also do uh, single or double draw molding. The way the software works is we create our CAD geometry with our basic mounting points and our design space. The design space is what our, we are allowing to be optimized. Uh, once we apply our uh, supports and our loading, the software generates the load path or the optimized design. And from there, we use a set of tools to create CAD geometry. In this example, we are going to look at a lower control arm for a radial controlled car. And the first step was to create the basic CAD shapes. Uh, so here we have the mounts to the chassis and the mount to the upright. And then we also have the shock mount. And then we modeled in our design space connecting all of that together. And we just tell the software that is the design space. From there, we added the supports where the control arm mounts to the frame. And then we added loading. So we're looking at a braking case on the control arm. We defined our materials from the material database. And then we also applied a symmetry plane. And then the software computed the load path or the optimized geometry. And from that, we have two different ways of creating the CAD geometry. One is to fit the geometry on the load path. The other is to use a set of tools to create a polynerb. To begin our optimization project, the first step is to import our initial CAD geometry. So we are going to open up the control arm with the mounting points for the frame, mounting points for the upright, the mounting point for the shock, and then our design space. To tell the software what it can optimize on, we just right click on that body and tell it it is the design space. From here, we are going to set up our structural analysis. Inspire uses these multifunction icons for all of our setup. So we can create fasteners connecting multiple parts together. We can use joints to connect multiple parts together and we can use contacts. Then we set up our supports and our loading. The loading can be forces, pressures, or torques. We can also add displacement constraints and force displacement. A displacement constraint is we give it a range that it's allowed to move in, and a force displacement is a certain value that we want it to displace. We can also add accelerations, so gravity and angular velocity and acceleration. We can add temperatures. We define our materials. And then we can define our shape controls. So the first step is we're going to apply the supports for where the control arm mounts to the frame. So that's going to be a support on that cylindrical face and on that cylindrical face. When you define a support, it automatically or defaults to all degrees of freedom being limited. If we double click on that support and we want to allow rotation, if we want to limit axial movement, 
we just turn that on. With them set gray, means we are limiting that motion. The next step is to apply our force. We want to apply 10 pounds to this face and 10 pounds to that face. Next thing we want to do is to define our symmetry. That is under our shape controls. We want a symmetric constraint on that body. So it gives us three symmetry planes that are all on by default, and we just turn off by clicking on it the two that we don't want. We also want to do a shape control based on manufacturing method. In this case, we want it to be an extrusion. Next thing we're going to do is to define our material. We have a material library built into the software, or we can create our own new materials. In this case, we want all of the parts to be ABS. So we just choose ABS out of the library for each of the components. Now that we have our supports, our loads, and our material defined, we are ready to run the optimization. When we're running the optimization, we have two different options. We can maximize the stiffness or minimize the mass. In our case, we want to minimize the mass. We give it the desired factor of safety. We could also have frequency constraints. In this case, we're just using the loads for our uh, stress constraints. Next thing we do is to define the minimum thickness of the optimized shape. This also controls the mesh size. So the smaller we allow the optimized shape to be, the finer the mesh is. The contacts are sliding and sliding with separation. In our case, everything is bonded, so we do not need separation. And then we can run the optimization. When the solving is done, we can view the optimized shape. We have a slider where we control how dense the optimized shape is. Uh, we don't have good connection between all of the components yet, so we will make it a little bit denser. So as we move the slider over, we can see it fills in the design space. If we want to use the direct option of creating a geometry on this optimized shape, we just hit fit, and it is now matching element to element CAD geometry to that optimized shape. If we wanted a more organic shape, we'll delete that fit. And we'll start to build our geometry off of the optimized shape or the load path. Uh, the set of tools that we use for that are polynerbs. And a couple of the different tools here are going to be wrapping around that optimized shape and bridging. To give us a little bit more control, we are going to add loops in certain areas. So we're going to start with the wrap option. And it works a lot like a loft in CAD, where we pick our starting profile, and we pick our ending profile, and it creates geometry in between. Add our geometry for the other side. Now, in this case, we just want to extend all of the ends into our mounting points. So we keep the polynerbs on, but we turn off wrap, and we can use a triad to pull or extend the geometry. Same thing on this end. We just want it to extend into the mounting point.
Now we want to use a bridge to connect down here. But before we do that, we need to use the loop to fine tune where we want the bridge connected. So we're going to add a loop here and here, here and here. That splits up that long section of geometry so that we can bridge from that segment to that segment. We also want to bridge from this side to this side. So we're going to add a couple more loops. And then again, we're going to bridge between those segments. For our last bridge, we will add a couple more loops. And then we'll bridge between them. So now we can overlay our optimized shape on our new CAD geometry. They match pretty well, so we will hide our optimized shape. From here, the last step would be to do a Boolean combine. of our CAD geometry. And now it's one single body. This has been Topology Optimization with Corey Bauer with Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.